Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Today, and we're back with a bunch of space updates today. Today we'll share four space updates with you. First of all, SpaceX begins assembling the first orbital starship and super heavy booster. Secondly, Blue Origin has completed 15 New Shepard test flights till this month. Thirdly, we'll talk about nuclear powered spacecrafts. And lastly, we'll talk about Astranus boosting up their satellite production. Let's move to our first update regarding SpaceX's first orbital starship. SpaceX has started accelerating the assembling process of the last prefabricated section of Starship's skyscraper-sized launch tower on Sunday morning. At the same time, Blue Origin kicked off a pre-flight briefing for its first crewed suborbital launch. SpaceX's Texas rocket facility in Boca Chica is now crowded with different parts of SN20 these days, as the assembling process has been started earlier this month. In the month of March, some parts for SN20 were spotted arriving at Texas for the first time. From the middle of the last month, it became more and more obvious that SpaceX's first supposedly orbital-class starship has kicked off the integration process of the first engine section having mounts for six Raptors instead of three. SpaceX has been uncompromisingly focusing on boosting up the speed of Starship development to reduce the waiting time to make it to orbit. SpaceX has rapidly built Starship hardware in the past, installing in any given ship, booster, or tank, so it becomes a little unpredictable until SpaceX actually starts assembling multiple rocket sections of any given dome, ring, or barrel. SpaceX was quite usual in building Starships consecutively. They'd put forward a series of them, but since SN16's full stack and following retirement have come up, no new Starship stacking procedure started. SpaceX put a brief stop in Starship production, which was quite unusual. From SpaceX, SN15 was the last Starship prototype to fly. It was also the one to land without damage. Now giving a big leap, SpaceX has started stacking Starship SN20. SN20 is our most beloved prototype, which is going to fly for the orbital launch. Earlier, SpaceX had planned to carry out the first orbital test flight using the Booster 3 and SN20 assembled together. Later, a change had come up as SpaceX had planned to dedicate the Booster 3 for ground testing, leaving Booster 4 for launch. One crucial thing that's been noticed is that this time SpaceX has to cover Starship's nose cone fully with heat protection tiles, which may take some more time than the earlier Starship integration time periods. For orbital class construction of Starship SN20, it will need a thrust structure which can easily host three sea-level Raptor engines along with three more vacuum-optimized engines to propel in space. According to a report, SpaceX will use a high-tech heat shield consisting of numerous heat protection tiles to protect Starship from atmospheric heating during re-entry, and SpaceX has progressed quite a lot in that component. Other than these components, they'll require some upgraded communication devices and controller devices to maneuver this giant in the sky and space as well. Almost 600 miles southeast of Blue Origin's Texas launch site, SpaceX was preparing for their orbital launch, probably the first fully reusable orbital rocket ever built. Three months back, in a cryptic post from Jeff Bezos, we got to know that Blue Origin was targeting to launch passengers on its new Shepard rocket for the first time ever, which marks the end of a prolonged development tenure. New Shepard is a small, single-stage rocket designed to be completely reusable and it's powered by one liquid hydrogen and oxygen-fueled BE-3 engine, which is capable of producing approximately 500 kilonewtons of thrust during liftoff. Blue Origin has completed 15 New Shepard test flights till this month, and 14 of those were successful. But in the same six-year period, SpaceX has recovered an orbital-class Falcon 9 booster, reused a Falcon booster on a commercial satellite launch, introduced Falcon Heavy, reused multiple orbital cargo dragon capsules, and turned out to be the first company in history to complete operational astronaut launch for NASA. Launched three Starship prototypes, five Starship prototypes flew to 10 to 15 kilometers, successfully was able to land four Raptor-powered Starship prototypes, 
rolled out Starship's first finished booster prototype, more than 100 successful orbital launches executed, flown the same Falcon 9 booster 10 times compared to New Shepard's record of 7, reused orbital class booster up to 68 times. Not only that, they also created the world's largest satellite constellation. SpaceX ignited a massive booster rocket on Monday night, July 19th. The huge super heavy stainless steel booster ignited three Raptor engines in a quick static fire test at SpaceX's Starbase facility in southern Texas, Boca Chica. Booster 3, the latest in a series of prototypes, aims to develop a fully reusable launch system for trips to the moon, Mars, and beyond. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk wrote Monday night on Twitter, Full duration firing of three Raptors on Super Heavy Booster. While inquired about the possibilities of more tests, Musk replied, Depending on progress with Booster 4, we might try a nine-engine firing on Booster 3. According to Musk, the Super Heavy Booster 3 won't likely fly in space and will be used for ground tests. But the next in line, Booster 4, might become the first one to launch a Starship. A test flight is planned to launch a Starship prototype from SpaceX's Starbase facility to a target zone near Hawaii, while the Super Heavy Booster splashes down in the Gulf of Mexico. SpaceX expects to recover both its Super Heavy and Starship vehicles for later reuse as it does with its Falcon 9 rockets. Let's move to our second update for today. NASA is collaborating with several space agencies to prepare a nuclear-powered rocket which will be much faster to go further than Mars. Recently, Idaho National Laboratory of the Department of Energy has partnered with NASA for developing space-based nuclear technologies. Blue Origin and General Electric Hitachi Nuclear Energy have also joined with NASA in this project. Earlier in 2018, a kilo power reactor using Stirling technology was put forward by NASA and the National Nuclear Security Administration. It was a smaller nuclear reactor power system that will provide 10 kilowatts of power and also long-duration crewed missions. That technology was strong enough to power habitats and life support systems. It will also help astronauts to search out resources in space, processing those resources such as ice into oxygen, water, and fuel, further using it for recharging rovers. As known from a report, NASA's demonstrated nuclear power system uses a very small-sized uranium-235 reactor core to provide enough power to propel spacecraft in deep space. The reactor will use low enriched uranium as fuel. Three reactor design concepts for the nuclear propulsion system have already been selected by the U.S. government team. In efficiency, nuclear propulsion is far more efficient than the chemical rockets in using its percentage of total energy exhausted. As stated by NASA, nuclear propulsion will be very appropriate for deep space missions along with those places of space where the light of the sun doesn't reach. Jim Reuter, Associate Administrator for NASA's Space Technology Mission Directorate, said, By working together across government and with industry, the United States is advancing space nuclear propulsion. These design contracts are an important step towards tangible reactor hardware that could one day propel new missions and exciting discoveries. Let's move on to today's last update. Astranus, a San Francisco-based geostationary satellite operator, has recently begun manufacturing four small-sized geostationary orbit satellites. According to a report, the company also has plans to produce those satellites in a large number in the future. Astranus had also got more than $100 million for increasing their productive capacity. In April 2021, Oslo Astranus had raised nearly $250 million, which boosted up their production further. Astranus is now purchasing the components needed for manufacturing those satellites in huge numbers through bulk orders. Recently, they've ordered aerospace components worth more than $30 million from Kongsberg Defense and Aerospace, RUAG Space, iTech Systems, Moog, and L3 Harris Technologies. John Gedmark, CEO of Astranus, said, This is the beginning of a ramp-up of our production rate. 
The plan is to have these built by the end of next year. That timeline is largely driven by long lead components right now, so we're starting to work with our suppliers on ways to either reduce that or have some things in stock so we can really bring that timeline down for future satellites. According to Gedmark, out of the four new developing spacecraft, they already got customers for the first three. Gedmark further said that we have multiple parties in advanced stages of negotiations for the fourth one. Regarding the lifeline of these upgraded satellites, Gedmark commented, the lifetime increase represents an increase from seven years to eight years. Throughput increase means an increase on our baseline KA band design from 10 to 12 gigabits per second. According to Astranus, Arcturus, their first commercial satellite, will be launched aboard SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket in 2022. Arcturus would be leased out by Pacific Data Port Inc., a US-based telecommunications company, to provide internet connectivity all over Alaska. Though Gedmark said that these upgraded satellites will be capable of providing 10 to 12 gigabits per second, Yet, Pacific Data Port Inc. said that they plan to lease only 7.5 gigabits per second capacity for the satellite. The weight of the new satellites, now being developed by Astranus, would be nearly 400 kilograms. In comparison to normal geostationary communication satellites, it would be one of the smallest to be available for commercial use. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.